In 2020, I published a book called Between Power and Irrelevance, The Future of Transnational NGOs. And uh, the book was, was written for a few different audiences, but really primarily international NGO leaders and leadership teams and uh, board members. So in the sector right now, there's been a lot of criticism about international NGOs not being sufficiently representative of those they're serving, accountable, effective, uh, and relevant, uh, frankly. So we're looking toward the future of the sector and assessing a lot of organizational reform efforts that leaders have tried to implement over the years and thinking about the promise and perils and challenges leaders have faced in trying to implement those reforms. And in the book, we basically argue that uh, leaders are having such trouble reforming NGOs to improve effectiveness, relevance, and uh, accountability, in part because of what we've later taken to calling their nonprofitness. In other words, uh, NGOs are often looked upon as charitable organizations and held to account for norms of, of being charitable organizations. But over time, NGOs have become much more complex. They've, uh, many of them have moved from charitable strategies, transferring wealth from uh, the wealthy to the poor, toward transformational strategies involving advocacy and political change trying to change the, the fundamental conditions that result in patterns of inequality and deprivations that uh, organizations and their supporters are trying to address. So as NGOs have shifted their strategies toward broader and, and more complex strategies, that sort of culture of philanthropy of thinking about NGOs as charities has become a constraint. And it's really frustrated the efforts of many NGO change managers trying to reform and adapt their organizations for the future. So uh, the book's been very well received, I'm pleased to say, and uh, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from practitioners and leaders from around the world. And I also use it as a teaching tool as well in uh, my course on international nonprofits here at Baruch. My book, The Paradox of Scale, was released. Um, and so the paradox of scale is essentially the problem that there are organizations that are very successful um, and I look particularly at environmental NGOs. So these environmental NGOs are very successful on the global scale, helping, um, helping governments negotiate treaties and things like that, um, and set priorities for where environmental work should be done. Or they're very successful on the local scale, implementing a project and, and having some measures of success on the ground um, with, with that kind of work, specifically in conservation. But as these organizations try to scale up to another location or to, um, well, to scale up to another location or to work, either move from the local scale to the global or the global to the local, they find that they are not as successful, right? And you know, these organizations, these international NGOs, are called to scale up their, organ their, their work because the problems that they're, they're designed to solve are huge and cross borders and urgent, right? Climate change is a very urgent issue. Um, and so these organizations feel the pressure to scale up their operations quite quickly. And so my question is, what is causing them to scale once they start scaling up their operations? And what I found was there are different, that, one that context matters, right? So in the global halls of the UN, that's one context. And working with um, a, a village in, in Papua New Guinea um, talking about fishing practices is a different context. And so those contexts matter and they're different. Um, and so the problems that keep arising are when we try to use the capacity norms and the ideas of accountability in one scale on another. Um, and so I demonstrated this in three different case studies in Papua New Guinea and Palau in the Philippines. And, um, and so now what I'm working on is looking at, so we, if we can understand that there are different capacities and accountabilities at a global scale and at a local scale, that working at the UN is very different from working in the fields um, and, and in the coral reefs of different places, right? Um, then how do we equip our nonprofit managers and our environmental practitioners to be able to balance those demands, right? To work in between those two worlds or those two scales. And so a paper I'm working on right now looks at how we train environmental practitioners. What are the skills that we are imparting upon them in higher education, in leadership institutions, and through philanthropy, right? So how are we building capacity in the field? And, um, and it also kind of, and the paper also demonstrates 
some basic skills that I think are really important for, um, for practitioners, like qualitative methods, like deliberative discussions, like intercultural communication. And I'll say that one of the things I really like about working at Baruch is that while well, we've just um, started a new class for graduate students on qualitative methods, I think that started already, um, and or we have a track where students can take more qualitative methods if they want to. Um, we also have intercultural communication or communications courses that look at how different um, cultures communicate with each other so that you can do it in a respectful and effective manner. So I feel like we are kind of engaging in those capacities here at Baruch and building that capacity within our student body, um, which will really equip them when they work internationally um, with NGOs.